So in this video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about products that I have bought and that have not really worked out for me. Um, so most videos that I watch like this, most other YouTubers do do a disclaimer. Um, in the beginning of the video, just letting you guys know that even though these products did not work out for me for one reason or another, does not mean that they are bad products. Actually, all the products that I have, I, they do have some of my holy grail in their collection. Just these specific ones did not work out for me. And what may work for one person may not work for the other. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first product that I have is from e.l.f. and it is their e.l.f. Cream Contour Palette. This product has been out for quite a while, but it actually got lost in my collection and I, as I was cleaning out my makeup stash, I did go ahead and that's when I re rediscovered this. And the reason that this product is in this video is not because of formulas, not because of the colors. It's just I don't really reach for it as often as I would like to. I mean, it was only like six bucks, I believe. So, so not a huge investment, but I just don't reach for it as much as I would like to. It does come with a huge mirror and you get four shades. You get a highlighting shade and then four bronze or contour shades. Um, I really just gravitated toward the top two, the other two were pretty dark for me and as you can see I did use it a little bit but honestly for buying it I really haven't used it as much as I would have liked to so for that reason I do regret buying it just because I don't show it as much love as I would like to the next product that I have is gonna be it's pretty dirty because before I decided to go ahead and film this video I cleaned out my makeup collection and I gave a lot of things to my little girl. So some of these I did have to kind of sneak back from her in order to do the video. Um, so that's why some of them is going to be a little bit dirty. But the next one that I have is the Wet n Wild Ombre Blush in the Princess Daiquiris. This blush would actually be very pretty on someone that was maybe a little bit fairer than I am. And my daughter does have a lighter skin tone than I do. Um, she's not as tan. I do self tan. So she is lighter naturally and she loves this and it actually looks, I mean she's eight so it does look really cute on her but just for my skin tone it didn't really work. Um, it is, it's a beautiful blush, it just didn't really work out for my skin tone. And the next product that I have is also from the drugstore, it is the Milani Highlight in 01 Sunlight and in the pan it looks just absolutely beautiful. It's one of those, it's one of those three tone highlights that you can either wear the highlight by itself or you can swirl them together and get one color. So I'll go ahead and do both. So, so at the top I do have each individual highlighter swatched separately, individually, and at the bottom they are all swatched together. In the pan and swatch, it looks absolutely stunning. But when I did apply it to my cheekbones, I did notice that it was a little bit chunky, a little bit glittery, and it accentuated my pores terribly. Um, so really for that reason, I don't really use it. This is also something that I did give to my little girl, and she absolutely loves it. The next products that I have are drugstore liquid lipsticks. And the first one is from Jordana. It is their sweet, their sweet cream matte liquid lip color. And I have been mine in the shade 07 Tiramisu. Now, this color is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, just so, so unbelievably pretty. Just your everyday dusty rose color. So it's not the color that threw me off. This formula is so drying. I've seen so many good reviews and maybe, maybe I just got a bad batch. But I've tried everything. I've tried using a balm. I've tried exfoliating more. Everything. And every time I put this on, it really settles into the fine lines and just looks, within minutes, so, so drying on the lips. So I've also given this to my little girl because I just, I can't really wear it. The next liquid lipstick I have is from Wet n Wild. And it is their, one of their new Mega Last Liquid Catsuit lipsticks. And this is the shade Gimme Mocha. These liquid lipsticks are absolutely amazing. I do have like six different shades and I absolutely love all of them except this one. It's nothing to do with the formula. These Wet n Wild Catsuit lipsticks are actually one of my top five favorite formulas that I have ever tried. The only thing that turned me off about this one is the shade. And it's 
not swatched, it's not looking very different. So this is the Jordan and this is the Wet n Wild. As you can see, the Wet n Wild is a tad bit darker than the Jordana with a little bit more brown in it. And swatched, it looks absolutely gorgeous. But when I applied this to my lips, it was so, it almost was like a brown, muddy color. I'm not sure. This too, I bought as a, uh, this too I bought as a recommendation of Casey Holmes. And I'm not sure if her skin tone is more olive than mine, but it looked absolutely beautiful on her. But when I did, when I went to use it, maybe this will look better on me when I am more tan um, or when I'm at my tan. I will, I will keep it and I will try it out then, but I just haven't really been using, I haven't really been gravitating toward it. And this too was only about five bucks at Walgreens. So not, again, not a huge investment, but I just don't reach for it like I should. Their color in the Wet n Wild liquid lipstick in the shade Rebel Rose, oh, I die. That color is absolutely stunning. One of my all-time favorites. It actually is a dupe for my Sephora liquid lipstick in Marvelous Mauve, the one that I raved about in at least two or three videos. And I absolutely love that one. This one, however, it just, it doesn't really work with my skin tone. And hopefully during the summer, when I'm a little bit tanner, um, this will come in handy more. And the next product that I have is an eyebrow pencil from NYX. And this is the NYX eyebrow pencil in the shade medium brown. And the only thing, I mean, the color absolutely does not match me whatsoever. This is more, this has more of an ashy tone to it. That's it right there. Um, I'm not sure. I absolutely fell in love with the NYX micro the NYX Micro Brow, I love that pencil. That one and the L'Oreal Brow Stylus are my absolute holy grail. But I'm not sure what it is about this. I don't, it, it kind of, it's a little bit more of a drier formula. So I did find that I was tugging at my brows more than I would have liked. And it does not come with this spoolie. It comes with this weird brush thing that does not brush through your brows whatsoever. I've had, I have had this for a while and this was another product that I found as I was cleaning out my collection. And as you can see, I did not use this. I use very, very little of this because there is so much product left. I've only used this maybe two or three times and every time I just felt like I was tugging and pulling at my brows and then the color match was just way off. And the next product that I have is a foundation and it is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. I bought mine in the shade Soft Beige and this I have mixed reviews about. The only reason that I regret purchasing this is because like a lot of the other products, I don't reach for it as often because I find that this just rubs away like nothing. A lot of my foundations, if I sneeze, blow my nose, or just maybe wipe my mouth, like wipe my mouth from eating around my lips, they usually tend to stay in place pretty well. This one, with one wipe, one sneeze, anything, and this completely goes away. Um, I do tend to wear this on days when maybe I'm filming or I just have to run a couple errands and I'm not going far. Um, so I do tend to use this here and there. I've had it for... Um, I've had it for a little bit and it still, I mean, it still feels brand new because I hardly use it. So I have seen so many people rave about this, but for me, it just didn't really, it just didn't really work out. And the next product that I have is from Sephora and it is their new highlighting palette. I absolutely love the packaging. It does come in something like a Z palette, but it does snap close. You do get six really pretty shades and I went ahead and swatched them for you guys and I have to say, I don't know if you're going to be able to tell, but they are, they're a little bit powdery. They're a little bit chunky. I just bought this on a whim because highlighters have, have to be one of my favorite, all-time favorite things about doing my makeup. So I just bought this, didn't even read any of the reviews. I just purchased it um, off the Sephora website. And there, there's so many highlighters I have in, in my collection that I gravitate toward and 
reach for more than this. It's an okay, it's okay, it's an okay palette. I want to say the palette was $24, so again, not a huge investment. It's not, it does equal out to about $4 a highlight, so I mean, not too bad. And I do believe that people can get a good use out of this palette, but for me, it just not, it's just not something that I reach for on a daily basis. And the next product that I have is also from Sephora. It is their Sephora. It is their Sephora Beauty Amplifier Primer. And this is supposed to be a primer like the next primer that I'm going to be talking to you guys about. And it's just supposed to give you a luminous glow underneath any foundation. As you can see, as I blend it out, you do get a really pretty soft glow. I guess when I purchased this, I thought it would be um, something comparable to my L'Oreal Lumi Primer. And it's just not. It doesn't... Once I put any foundation over it, the glow kind of just goes away. I do have to find, I do find myself putting on extra highlight or anything if I'm looking for a more glowy look. And that's kind of what I was looking for this to do. So I do continue to use this because I did purchase it, but it gave me the glow that I expected. The um, product that I have is actually the Becca Backlighting Priming Filter. And as you can see, I don't know if you're going to be able to tell from the bottle, but as you can see, I have use this completely up now this is a $40 primer $40 now I did not see I absolutely did not see a difference between this and my L'Oreal Lumi primer I bought this thinking that this was going to be 10 times 10 times more glowy than the than the L'Oreal because this is high-end and like triple the cost but it was not. I heard so many people raving about this that I wanted to love it so With my L'Oreal, I literally only use one pump. One pump covers the entire face and gives me the most beautiful glow underneath my, my foundation. With this primer, I was using three to four pumps and still not even getting the amount of glow that I was from that one. So I did keep it, I did use it, but I will not be repurchasing just because I have drugstore, I do have drugstore primers that I find just work so much better. Okay guys, so that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I, I really don't like talking neg negatively. I really don't like talking negatively about any of these products. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big, a big thumbs up. As always, please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.